reassignment of tickets. So it's pretty common that uh, a ticket comes in, um, it gets categorized, maybe it was categorized wrong, it gets recategorized, it gets assigned to somebody else, they may be assigned it to another person and so forth. And all of this creates delay, it creates loss of productivity, um, it's inefficient for IT, right? And so we really need to get away from this hot potato approach and move to a much better real-time collaboration approach. And we're gonna talk about some cool features there that we're gonna really help you collaborate in real time to resolve those incidents or requests uh, much more rapidly. All right, the third challenge that we resolve or solve with Tenno is manual processes. Um, and so although we already had a lot of automation and innovation um, in our platform, we now are increasing uh, if you will, from an AI-driven perspective, the intelligence of the platform to provide even more automation, more self-service um, in that platform. So it makes it easier for IT to alleviate their workload, makes it better for employees, more productive. And then finally, um, a lot of organizations, not necessarily using ShareWell, but some other tools, um, have experienced you know, a dated user experience. And, uh, and what that does is that really affects the IT personnel's efficiency and ability to resolve these issues quickly. And so um, we've, 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 once again, with 9.6, starting with 9.6 last year, we really had a pretty significant um, revamp of our user experience. And, and we've just continued that um, to provide a, an even more streamlined user experience for agents um, within incidents or tickets or requests. So um, let's talk about the features and how they map back to solving these problems. So the first really cool, innovative um, capability we've added is a Slack app. So this is the ability for employees within Slack to use those bot uh, commands, if you will, to actually create tickets or open tickets, to check the status of tickets, and, and so forth. And so it's a whole new channel uh, for employees to interact. Um, it improves the collaboration because they're able to self-serve and, and, and then launch into a collaboration with IT, right? And it also speaks to this intelligence in the platform, and again, ability to self-serve. All right, so the second feature, related, but slightly different, is Slack chat integration. So this is, so this is somebody in Slack, in the Slack app, um, being able to do commands. This is right within the ShareWell interface, the ability for an agent to immediately reach out to another agent or to the employee to create a channel on the fly. Maybe it's, maybe it's a major incident. They need to create a channel to resolve that incident immediately in real time. And so the Slack chat, of course, it prov provides significant improvement in collaboration and real time res resolution. Um, it also um, is, of course, there's a lot of intelligence built into how that works, um, and it really streamlines that user experience, again, mainly for IT. All right, so the next one, CVA, stands for Sherwell Virtual Agent. So the Sherwell Virtual Agent um, provides both natural language processing capability as well as um, machine learning that taps into a knowledge base, into the service catalog, and allows, again, serves up knowledge from a self-service perspective, uh, can look up and find items in the service catalog and even automate those to a large degree. Again, providing a much, much more intelligent experience from a self-service perspective. That's a whole new channel for the users to interact with. Um, and um, it can, there can be even a handoff right, to um, that IT um, user as well. All right. Next is walk-up support. So this is really interesting. So walk-up support from a, from a technology perspective isn't, isn't really super complex. Um, there isn't like some you know, super intelligent logic necessarily that you need um, to build this, but it provides a huge, huge opportunity for IT to really create a community um, with users, to interact with them face-to-face. Uh, and provide that sort of Apple Store-like experience. And so walk-up support is really cool. It provides another channel for the users, employees. Um, again, it's face-to-face -face collaboration, right? Um, and you, you could say, um, because of that face-to-face -face interaction, it actually 
improves the time to resolution a lot of times because um, people will bring in their tech directly to that, that agent. Um, all right, so the next one is skills management. This one's cool because it works together with a lot of these other key features and capabilities. Um, in fact, we were talking about real-time collaboration. Skills management allows the agent to find the right resource as well as understand what they're working on, what their workload is, so that they can either reassign, okay, that's not real-time collaboration necessarily, but at least they got the right person, so it's not reassign, 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 um, or they can find the right person and then invite them to that Slack channel associated with the incident, um, which can provide real-time resolution. So, um, so that skills management, and I'll come back to mobile, by the way. Uh, so skills management, of course, provides a better experience for IT. It provides a streamlined experience for the employee. It's not another channel, but it is a streamlined. Um, and, and again, it provides the ability to link and collaborate to the right person. Related item, oh, let's go back to mobile. So mobile um, really is all about creating a very adaptive and responsive uh, experience for users. Because you don't want to presuppose a user is going to use a desktop application or a tablet or mobile or any one, right? They could be using any at any time. This mobile workforce, uh, modern workforce, right, kind of future of work is really about employees gaining access to the information they need no matter where they are, no matter what device they're using. Um, and so we've really just kind of doubled down on our adaptive and responsive design, providing a much better experience from the portal, as well as for agents, so not just employees, but agents, so field services people, people that are out um, you know, checking on servers or maybe it's through the walk-up support. You know, they don't have to have a laptop even. They can actually help customers with a tablet just like that Apple Store experience. So mobile has been really improved, again, from a, from a user experience perspective as well as from a, an IT perspective. All right, so let's talk about related item navigation. So related item navigation um, is this cool capability that allows, um, allows our IT agents to stay in context of the ticket, so have that information in front of them while they can, for instance, automatically search for knowledge or related incidents or known errors. Um, in addition, that's where they can then chat and collaborate in real time as well through that other interface. So this is, this is really cool. Um, again, it's mainly for the technician to improve their, their um, user experience. It, of course, relates back to the employee um, and there's some intelligence built into that as well in terms of how that search. There's a new solution search capability, um, which is super cool. Okay, um, and, and that is, by the way, where Slack chat is actually implemented. And then finally, sentiment analysis. So this is machine learning right in our platform. Um, any text field on any form can be used um, through and, and be, be essentially you know, channel to the sentiment analysis, machine learning, and it can come back with a score. There's some really cool customization that users can, to, or our users or customers um, can use to implement that. Um, and so again, that, that can provide a better experience for the IT to respond back in a timely manner, and of course we're using machine learning for that. So again, you can see how these key capabilities really impact and solve these challenges. Okay, so with that, let's move to our next portion of our whiteboard. Just roll this over. Is this good? There. All right. Real-time collaboration to figure out where to put the whiteboard. Okay. Okay. So um, let's 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 talk about a before and after scenario. So and by the way, I wish I had the art skills to do this, but I did have help. Um, so because my whiteboards in the past, if you watch them. Sometimes I get uh, a little messy. So, um, so all right, so let's talk about the before and after. So this is a pretty common scenario where, um, in essence, we have a user and they want to submit a request or an incident, right? And in the past, they would typically do that via email, the portal, or maybe um, you know, an agent directly via phone. And that's a limited number of channels because what if, right, they would rather self-serve, um, they want to do it through mobile, they want to use walk-up support, et cetera, right? And so now, right, we've significantly improved that experience. We've provided um, four additional key channels for them to interact and engage 
um, with IT or with, it, you know, could be any, actually could be any department, not necessarily IT, this could be um, HR requests or um, could be facilities because of course we do not just IT service management, but enterprise service management capabilities as well. So, um, so here we have the after. Um, we then have this request, this ticket, this incident, um, and we need to classify it because this is a key to really understanding what it's going to take to resolve it, who should this should be assigned to, who we want to collaborate with. Um, so that real-time assignment is really, is really key. So most of the classification is done manually. And this is, again, where errors can occur. There's a time factor and there's errors. And it also sort of really um, limits self-service capability. And so um, with 10.0 and then new releases after 10.0 this year in 2020, right, we we're implementing a bunch of, of cool AI with our virtual agent, with the Slack app, et cetera, that's gonna help auto-classify and route. Um, so we don't even need an agent involved, but a user through these channels, and today it's through CVA, right, the virtual agent, can automatically get their incident request categorized, which then will ask them for the right information, which then allows them, if they can get to the right category, the, give the right information to the virtual agent or through a, a, a specifics form, right? Then that could be automated. That, that entire process could be theoretically automated. There could be an automation behind that, which is super cool. That brings us to this next thing, which is with manual classification, a lot of times there's manual exchange of information uh, because it maybe got, didn't get classified right or we don't have all the information. But now, right, we can automate that self-service experience. Okay. So in some cases, in the simple cases, that's it. It's resolved. Boom. Done. So in the new, with the, with the new 10.0, right, we can auto self-serve, resolve those the more simple types of incidents or requests or tickets, right, automatically. If it's more complex, and there are those instances where it's more complex, there's no way to really automate it entirely um, for that end user, right? Then in the past, we were in this world of sort of ticket reassignment, where we're continually to, to reassign, reassign, reassign. There's a lot of studies on what that cost is of reassigning the time, the productivity, the inefficiencies, et cetera. But now, right, we can, we can collaborate in real time through that Slack integration, through that skills management capability, and resolve that um, automatically. So um, another couple quick notes here. So for those that maybe joined the live stream a little late, a um, couple things. First of all, our launch today, right, um, we're doing this whiteboard as part of the launch, but you can also go to this landing page, so sharewell.com slash CSM10 to find out more. There's some cool links there to other information. Um, this recording will be posted later as well. Um, and then also, right after this slide whiteboard, right, we are going to do um, at 11.30 a.m., we are going to do a live demo. So there will be a registration link in the comments of this live stream, so you can get over, register, watch that demo, uh, actually see the product in action. All right, so let's move on to the next part for our whiteboard. So, so we've covered the challenges solved before and after. Now we're going to talk about introducing CSM Enterprise. So, um, okay, so this is now a packaging discussion. So, and, and this is, but this is really important because this is a huge differentiator uh, between us and most of our competition, right, if not all of them. So um, in the past, um, let's say, you know, really for the last decade, Sharewell has offered you know, practically a single SKU, right? Sharewell Service Management. And all of you existing customers already, you know, you, you, you know this. Obviously, you know this real well. So within that single SKU, right, you've got ITSM. You've got some other cool solutions for security or facilities that you could download. Um, and, and those were downloadable. Um, but we then, a couple of years ago, we, we introduced a couple of new products, if you will, new solutions. Um, we, we introduced HR service management and PPM, and those were add-on SKUs to CSM. So you could even say HRSM was an add, as well as PPM, right? So hopefully that's, you know, meets my dependentship requirements. Anyway, um, you guys can actually read that. So those are also add-ons, all right? And then we also have, of course, our, our Sherwell Asset Management, which has sort of been there, and there's not any big, big changes there um, from a packaging perspective. Um, so, but the thing is, 
um, what we decided is, hey, why not just roll those capabilities, right, those solutions into a single SKU? So customers, there's no confusion, there's no additional you know, purchase process or SKU or you know, they have to go through. Um, and so with this 10.0 launch, we're also launching right, a new package called CSM Enterprise. Um, so CSM Enterprise right, will include Shareable Core, which is our core no-code platform. Super innovative, right? allows you to customize and write, even create your own workflows and applications very rapidly. Um, that's included, of course. Uh, the ITSM solution is included. But in addition, our HRSM, PPM, facilities, and security solutions are all included as well. Um, they simply take more licenses of your concurrent pool. So if you have additional users and you, and you, and you maximized um, your, your licenses, right, you can buy more, but it's more of the same. It's just more CSM Enterprise SKU uh, licenses. Um, and again, we do that concurrently for those that are you know, prospects or new customers. That's concurrent licensing, which is super cool because again, any user could use all or any one of those capabilities um, and they would have access to that, that single license. Now, CAM is still there, right? So CAM is still an add-on. You can add our shareable asset management. Um, but as we've already talked about, shareable virtual agent, it is not included in CSM. It is available uh, for a small additional charge. And there is a promotion running now for, for customers for the next quarter through Q2 uh, for new customers to adopt um, CBA. Not for CBA itself, but for the upgrade to CSM Enterprise. So if you're an existing CSM cu customer and you want to upgrade to CSM Enterprise to get the full package, you can do that. Um, and again, there's a promotion for that running. And then there's also a bundle, um, which will allow you to add on CBA uh, for a small charge. So whether you're interested in CBA and adding that, um, so existing customers can add CBA, um, or you want some of the additional capabilities of those ESM solutions, right? Either way, you can upgrade and, and you can bundle them or you can upgrade individually. Um, but the pricing, just so you know, the pricing incentive is on CSM Enterprise or the bundle of CVA plus the CSM Enterprise. If you just want CVA, there's, there's no promotions right now, so it's, it's list price. So um, with that, um, one other plug here, which is, of course, our core platform allows us and third-party partners and the community to develop super cool um, extensions, integrations, and other solutions via mergeable applications. And those are, are offered in our new marketplace. Um, so you can check that out as well to see what other capabilities um, are available. So let's move on. Another plug. Live demo after this at 11.30, look for the link in the comments. Okay, so this is the last part of the whiteboard and then we get to a few interviews. So, um, you know, obviously in the conversation, uh, I have conversations of course with our, our new salespeople, with customers, with analysts, with industry experts, and, and this conversation a lot of times comes to, okay, so what is different about ShareWell? Like, what's, what's your differentiation in the market? Um, and a lot of times I flip it back around to those experts and ask them questions about this um, to really understand what they think the differentiation is. And so after, you know, kind of spending, you know, weeks and months and, and even longer kind of having these conversations, um, you know, we came up with this model that really I think it clearly articulates um, a key, key um, differentiation between us and many of the top competitors. So if we were, for instance, just to take um, the top, you know, competitors in the MQ or, um, you know, really w within the market, right? You could probably figure out pretty quick after I talk about this where they fit, right? So let's talk about the horizontal axes on this matrix. So um, the horizontal is we have vendors that we compete with um, that focus on IT operations management. So they don't have simply an ITSM offering. In fact, ITSM may not even be their lead offering. They have a whole set of you know, maybe it's endpoint protection, or it's monitoring, uh, or it's identity and access management, or they have a whole stack of IT-centric and operations management-centric um, technologies. And, and that's, that's the game they play, and they'll, they'll offer incentives if you buy more than one, for instance. And so there's really, you know, they fit into two categories, right? right? So, so one category would be um, those vendors 
that are have a more simple low TCO offer, right? Maybe it's a little bit quicker to implement. Maybe they don't have quite as broad of an implementation. And then you have those vendors um, that are much more complex. Maybe they're more legacy. They've been around forever, um, and they have a very rich offering, but it's pretty expensive. It's pretty complex. It takes a long time to implement. Maybe it's proprietary scripting languages, etc. Um, and they fit down here, right? Again, their focus is ITOM. But then we have these other other vendors, and there there's much fewer of these that have said, no, 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 no. What we're really all about is a platform, right? These solutions were all built on a platform, and, and we really, this platform is super important because it allows us as a vendor to create solutions that are fit for purpose, but it also allows you as an organization to build them. And so we have those vendors down here that are pro code that actually ship Maybe they ship like you know 1,500 JavaScripts or, or whatever. They, they ship a bunch of scripts. And if you want to do anything interesting, you're going to have to have professional coders right, to develop those and to customize your implementation. They may even use you know, the term no code, but reality is there's script behind it, which also complicates upgrades, et cetera. Um, and, then, and then basically, you have Sharewell. Right? So Sharewell was built again, from a no-code perspective. So the platform is no-code, it's been there, and ITSM is, is actually a solution that's built on our no-code platform. So we built it. We, of course, have a lot of effort and time. It's certified across IT, you know, 11 ITIL processes um, and automates a ton of stuff. Um, but really at the heart, it is an ESM platform offering with specific solutions built in each area so we're not, we're, taking, we're not taking an ITSM solution and trying to twist it for HR. It is actually, we're taking our, our, our no-code platform and building an HR solution fit for purpose for HR. Um, and again, some patterns and, and, and some of the goodness that comes from ITIL, we maybe reuse those because it makes sense. Um, but, but it is not an ITSM solution for that. So that's where we sit. So if you want a simple, agile, low TCO solution and you want to solve a bunch of problems for employee experience, um, innovation, automation across the business, um, that's where you need to go. So, with that, let's go ahead and do some interviews. So I think our first interview is with uh, Mike McMullen. So Mike McMullen is a solution architect. Mike, why don't you introduce yourself quickly? Awesome, thank you. Yeah, I've, uh, just to give you a little bit of background on myself, I've been with Sherwell for just over 10 years now. Um, for the past, my first 10 years of Sharewell, I've been in our professional services organization, and a year ago I moved over to the pre-sale side as a solution architect. Awesome, awesome, cool. So Mike is actually going to be doing our demo pretty quick um, on, specifically, he's going to be doing uh, the demo around real-time collaboration uh, into walk-up support and then CVA, right? So that's going to be the demo here at 1130, so go register, look for the link. Um, all right, so let me ask you a couple questions about that real-time collaboration aspect. So, um, so you know, talk a little bit about, for instance, the Slack integration and how that improves the IT experience and the employee experience. Sure, sure. What I really love about the new Slack integration is that right from within the ShareWell tool, right where the technician is working, they don't have to leave to communicate with the customer or to communicate or collaborate with other technicians. They can do it right within the platform, right within the browser client. That's so awesome. they can initiate, they can invite people. Yep. Um, the chat log is right there on the right-hand side. And not only that, we're not locking up the rest of the system while they're communicating. They have access to the rest of the, uh, the, rest of the incident or service request where they can look at details and copy information back and forth. And very cool, very cool. So is that, is that chat log, is that stored into the journal? The well, chat log, upon closing out the ticket, because yep. you may have many collaborating sessions during the life cycle of an yep. incident. Yep. But when you close it, the entire log is rolled right into a journal entry. When you go into an existing ticket, though, you also see right on the right-hand side within the new related item navigation, yep. you'll see the chat history is there as well. Very cool, very cool. Okay, so let's talk about a couple other features um, in, in that technician view, sort of that agent view. So, um, so first is that chat, as I understand it, is in that related item navigation area. Um, can you talk about some of the other features and capabilities in there that help technicians to be efficient? Absolutely. So right within the related item navigation, there is an email section where they can go in, they can start emailing the customer. Again, they have access to the detail screen, the journal entries, the 
all the details of the incident or service request. Yep, yep. While they're working on the email, they can copy information back and forth. They have uh, their attachments right there. So they can see all the details of attachments. They can drag files and just drop them right into ShareWell to upload them. Cool. Um, they can look at and review the configuration items that are tied into that incident or service request. Yep, yep. All right there within the related item navigation while also reviewing the details of the incident or service request. Okay. okay. I also heard there's there was an improvement to the search capability, um, not just knowledge, but it's sort of a mixed search, right? It, You're exactly right. Right within, there's a really big solution search area yeah. where they can search the knowledge base. They can search other incidents and problems. Um, again, without locking up the rest of the incident, it's all right there on the right-hand side. They can review solutions while working on the incident or service request. That's super cool. Okay, very Absolutely. good. Absolutely. So that all, I mean, that's all good. Um, but to find the right technician, I know this is sometimes an issue, right? You, you, you have to reassign it, or you want to pull in somebody to help solve this in real time, but you gotta find the right person, right? So how do we help customers you know, find the right person? You know, Sherwell has always routed tickets to the correct team based off the classification, yeah, yeah. but now we can actually click on a button, the skills button, find the expert, and Sherwell's gonna bring up, based on the type of ticket that's been recorded, the right technicians that can help you resolve it. We're also showing their workload, and soon we'll be showing whether or not they're available. Very cool, very cool. All right, that's awesome. So hey, thank you so much. Uh, everybody, again, tune in to the demo later on, but uh, Mike's gonna do that, so thanks, Mike. All right, we'll see ya. All right, so the next person I'm gonna bring in uh, here is Tina Zimmerman. So Tina runs our global solutions engineering team. Maybe do a quick introduction. Hey, Matt, doing? nice to see you. Good thanks for having me here. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm Tina Zimmerman. I run the, the global solution engineering team here for ShareWell, and I'm here to talk about uh, one of our new features. Yeah, yeah, cool. So tell us about walk-up. So I've asked Tina to talk about our walk-up support capability, and again, kind of you know a little bit behind the scenes why this is critical for a lot of our, our customers. Sure. I mean, first of all, this came you know customer requested, right? So uh, I think that customers wanted a new way to interact. With, with their customers from the, on the service desk. So we added the option for walk-up support, and it sounds like an old school idea, yeah, right? I yeah, mean, yeah. you know, all of us have done some kind of walk-up support in our life, whether it's at the DMV to get a new driver's license, or at the deli counter to get, you know, the turkey for your sandwiches. Um, and it's, you know, that kind of walk-up support people don't love, right? You know, yeah. people don't yeah. love their experience yeah. of going to the DMV. So we weren't really trying to recreate that experience. What we wanted to do was to create a new option for customers to come in and create a community with us in IT, yeah. right? So that the IT can be, now get to know our customers better. We're not just a bunch of guys sitting far off on, on one of the wings of your, of your uh, uh, building. We're gonna come down, we're gonna get to know you, you're gonna get to know us. And for, with our walk-up support, what makes it different from the traditional walk-up support that we've experienced as users in the past is not only do I know, you know, I get my number like I would in any walk-up support, yep. but I also know how many people are ahead of me, you know, how long it's going to take for them to get to me. Yep. Um, we can add options for you as well if you want to be if you want to be texted when your position is ready. So cool. if you're not exactly, you know, if you don't want to just sit there and wait, you yep. can either go yep. back to your desk if you're close by or go get a coffee. Yep. Some of our customers have really taken this idea and really branched out with this and even created kind of like little pods near the IT department where it's like a coffee shop. It's cool. You know, where That's people cool. can sit there and it really becomes this community environment and they get to know each other. And what we found is if you look at some of the analytics around walk-up support, you know, the productivity loss is so much less because you're going directly there, you're getting your problem solved immediately, you're with an IT support person, and then your happiness factor yep. is super high, yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah, awesome. so what what we have what hasn't transitioned in the market yet is that not enough, not enough people are doing it yet. Yep. Yep. But I think all of us have experienced this, you know, you I think kind of where the idea comes from is something like the Apple Store, yeah. right? Everyone has known there's something wrong with their phone. They go and they get their number, and then they go around and walk around the mall and get a pretzel, yeah. right? And with, you know, five minutes before your time, they paid you back and they fix you immediately, and you're a happy little camper and you go on with your day. Yeah, cool. So I think that's what we wanted to add is that true experience of getting to know our end users better and getting them quick support to help their productivity levels increase, as well as stop all of the shadow IT. 
Yeah. Right, you know, as we know, that's a huge problem in IT shops today. You know, it has been forever sure. that you know someone just grabs you at your desk and has you fix a problem, and that ticket never gets tracked. So then our analytics are all off because we don't really know how many incidents we're actually solving. Yeah, and it may not even be the right solution, right? I mean, we don't know, right? Exactly. So right, very but but I think it, you know this is just a great new option. You know, just another part of the omni channel to add to the experience for our customers. Yeah. So I'm nice. super excited to bring it to ten. Very cool. Awesome. Thanks for telling us about it. So uh, Sharewell Apple. Esque walk up support and espresso machine not included, but anyway. All right, thanks, All right, see <laughs> thanks a lot. Thank you. All right, so next we are going to bring in Ari. So Ari is uh, on our product team, but I'll let Ari introduce himself. Sure. Uh, so I'm Ari So. Uh, I'm a senior product manager at Sharewell. I've uh, been here a couple years now. Uh, worked with the product for, I guess, about eight now. So yeah. Yeah, cool. Very cool. All right, so so Ari, so, so we've got a, I got a, Bunch of stuff I want to ask Ari. Um, the first piece that I'm going to talk to him about um, is the Sharewell Virtual Agent, and that will be part of the demo later. Again, link in comments to register for the demo, but um, that will be the part of the demo later. But Ari's been really instrumental in working um, on that technology, and you know we have some really cool embedded AI stuff. So maybe talk a little bit. Give me a, kind of an overview of, of what the Sharewell Virtual Agent you know kind of supplies to our. Our customers. Sure. So the virtual agent, um, our goal with the virtual agent was uh, to provide a way for our customers' customers to interact with the service catalog uh, primarily um, using natural language processing. So, um, you know, as you know, that's a that's a hot button AI item that we're working on. Um, and again, so the goal is to um, enable them to be able to search that service catalog using their everyday words on, on what they think is is uh, you know going on. So um, the concept here in 10.0 is the chat virtual agent will be an embedded window on the portal. Okay. Uh, the customers will be able to come to the portal and interact with that agent. It'll know who they are, so all of the you know rights and security around it will be on the, the customer's role specifically. Okay. So they'll be able to see tickets that they have open. They'll be able to open a ticket by searching the, uh, the service catalog. Um, they'll be able to search knowledge articles all from uh, directly interacting with that, that uh, awesome. chat virtual agent. That's awesome. That's cool. Yeah. So a um, couple things. So, so one of the things with virtual agents is, of course, it runs on data, right? I and mean, you've already alluded to that. Um, in our case, it's, it's knowledge or maybe primarily the, the service catalog. So can you talk a little, you know, give some tips to those customers that are you know, either existing customers or new customers that really are, are looking to implement this in the future or hopefully near future? Um, and you know, how can they get ahead of the game? Yeah, so the big thing about um, the, the natural language processing um, and, and virtual agent uh, is going to be the data, the value that you get is only going to be as good as the data you provide it. So, you know, preceding it with that data um, around how customers would search for items in their service catalog will be huge. So I'd say to get ahead of it, if you're looking to, you know, if this is a path that you're going to go down, the first thing I do is start to look at my uh, my service catalog yeah. and understand, you know, that there's some variance in there. Uh, the example I use a lot is you don't want to have seven subcategories that are all about printers because there's not a lot for them to understand the difference right. between you know, printer problem one and printer problem two. Um, and then secondly is to start understanding and mapping out some of the synonyms and phrases that people would use to ask for those things. So you know, again, a mailbox is a great example. I think that's one of the demos that we'll do is uh, people will ask for a new mailbox, a new email account, a new account, and all of those things mean the same thing to them. And so making sure that you see that nat natural language library with those phrases is going to be a, uh, go a long way in, in providing the value to the customer. Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. So, uh, so take note. Um, yep. So good advice. Next, uh, again, I think we have you know people have had varying degrees of success, right? Have had um, different types of experiences with virtual agents or bots in the past, um, and and I think our customers have different expectations of how they're going to work, right? So some people maybe you know are watching here and may say, oh, they're thinking, hey. You know, 20 questions from the bot, and then boom, we go off and you know create the ticket, or we go off and 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 maybe do an, some some automated response. Um, but others might be saying, oh well, actually no, I want to direct, uh, I want to direct the agent directly to like a form. But talk a little bit about how, because I know you've done a lot of work with our customers, you've done survey work, but kind of talk a little bit about pros and cons of those approaches and kind of where we ended up. Sure. So. 
the um, the thought about you know I ask a, the bot for or in this case the virtual agent um, for the ability to create a you know a new mail account and then for that agent to be able to say you know what do you want the account to be called what distribution groups do you want it to be and all those things um, can be really cumbersome a lot again I use an example a lot of like onboarding a new employee I'm sure you know all the customers out there have very complex onboarding forms. You don't want to go through answering those hundred questions on how to onboard a new employee with the virtual agent. Got it. Yep. So um, when we talked to customers, one of the things that we found provided a lot of value was being able to show them the service catalog, get them to what you know we think is best for uh, what they've asked for, and then being able to link to that specifics form that our customers already have created. So yep. being able to get them to the form they've already managed and maintained one of the reasons that that's valuable is just as you said being able to get to the form and fill out the form the other reason is we found that a lot of our customers have different people maintaining those forms yep. and so um, instead of forcing the person who's maintaining the virtual agent and all of the you know natural language pieces to have to understand what types of questions to ask or um, to build in that additional workflow where they have to manage that we allow all of that workflow to be managed by the person who's responsible for that specific form yeah, so, that's very cool yeah. very cool so so basically what you're saying kind of I guess recap is that by when we know the categorization Right? We're certain this is the categorization linking to a form that's already pared down to just the information we need for that category, right? Is both easier to maintain, right? Easier to, to kind of effectively create, and also maybe even a better experience for the for the, the end user because they can just see exactly what they need to fill in. It's not like a back and forth, back and forth, right? With delays. Yeah, stuff. especially because um, if you think about it, when you're interacting with a virtual agent, if it were to ask all of those questions, there's not really an understanding of like how many more questions do I have? Yeah, like yeah, when yeah. are you going to stop asking yeah. me? Or yeah. um, and so um, all of that is has kind of been factored into this. And and you know obviously we may look to to provide a hybrid version later, but in our current you know in Tenno and, and what we've experienced with customers in, in the beta and testing, um, getting them to a form just seemed a lot more uh, user-friendly from their customer's perspective. Yeah, makes sense, makes sense. So, um, so another, another interesting you know, kind of way in which this could be used, or, or a pattern I've seen or heard of, right, is this notion of, okay, so I'm interacting with a virtual agent, um, and then it maybe can't completely solve my issue, but it got to the right category, right, asked for the information, um, it seems like with some of the other features we have, right, it, it could almost act like um, a, a, a real-time handoff, very close to a real-time handoff from virtual agent, tickets created in queue, right, agent picks that up and could even interact via Slack, right, or some other channel, but via Slack in real-time, right, so it's almost, it could almost be like a handoff, um, a virtual to real-time chat as well through sure. that. So, yeah, I mean, our goal with a virtual agent is to make the experience of the customer getting to what they're looking for better. But, um, you know, the things that you can do from there as a handoff to a live customer or to automation is completely on you. I mean, the, yeah, yeah. the best value you're going to see for this is, you know, figuring out things, again, back to the email example, uh, you know, I know that I need to create an email account, the customer searches, I need a new mailbox. They get to that account, they fill out all the information in the form, and you've automated the creation of that mailbox through you know, a script yep. of your own. Yep. So it can actually run through, see that, that that's been categorized as mailbox creation, pick up an automation, run through, create the mailbox, yep. and send the customer the email like, here's the new mailbox, here's the new uh, username and password, log in, and you've now solved a customer's ticket with cool. zero human interaction. That's awesome, that's awesome. And I'm just gonna clarify one thing. He said script. Mm, it's really, in our case, it's what's called a one-step automation, sure. right? It's drag and drop, so that was just a terminology thing, so it is actually no code, but... Okay, so uh, let's talk about a couple other things. So we talked about virtual agent, right? We talked about the Slack chat integration with Mike, talked about walk-up uh, with Tina. Let's talk about the Slack app, because this is super cool, because that's different than the, the internal or the integrated Slack chat. Um, talk a little bit about, give us an overview of, of how, um, you know, customers would use that. Yeah, so... Um, in working with the chat virtual agent, one of the things that we found was the virtual, so I'm going to go into a little bit of AI theory yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, sure. uh, so the virtual agent is um, the, the thought that there's some intelligence behind it, and that's the natural language processing, right? Um, so you ask it and it's able to tell what you mean based on you know, some, some algorithm that uses the words that you said versus the words that were provided to that engine. Yeah, yeah. 
The bot is more of a dummy response. So there's a script in the background, um, or it, you know, in the Slack instance, it's a it's an at uh, command, um, and so you would at this this bot and provide it a, a you know a set of commands that you want it to do. The cool thing is that in 10.0 we've added webhooks, and so this rides on top of the webhooks functionality. So though there's no intelligence behind this, uh, you get to be the intelligence behind it. So. Um, when you at the Slack bot, you know, we're going to have a couple of out of the box uh, or out of the map versions of, uh, of things that you can do, which are going to be create an incident, withdraw an incident, or get the status of an incident. Um, and that's as easy as saying, you know, at share well bot, uh, create an incident, or what's the status of, you know, one, two, three, four. Um, but the cool thing about this is it all runs on the webhooks in a one step. So if you wanted to add another layer of functionality, you can literally go into that one step parse the value that's coming through for whatever command that you're adding and, and add actions behind that. And they can be cool. as complex as you want them to be. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. you can do that's escalations cool. that way or you know, customer responses or even kick off a Slack chat with, you know, with the customer all through yep. the chat box. So. Yep, yep, yep. And as a, I mean, I guess maybe my geek coming through, but you know, I was a developer a long time ago. But uh, we use Slack, of course. Uh, that's our standard here at ShareWell from a communications collaboration perspective. Um, and anybody who uses Slack, you, you know there's a ton of cool add-ins, um, and those, those slash commands, I mean, that, that, those, those are super cool. You can do all kinds of cool stuff, and so if you learn just a little bit of syntax, syntax you can actually accomplish something quicker than, let's say, with a virtual agent, right? Because you're, cause you know what you want to do, again, kind Potentially of, a whole different audience, that's what the great thing about the yeah, Slack bot is. Yeah. And so these are actually not even slash commands, these are, uh, these are at mentioning a bot. Oh, really? So yeah, yeah. it's, oh, it's even cool. further than that. So. All, again, the great part about that is that um, the setup in Slack is really simple because all you're doing is creating the, exist the existence of the bot. Yep. With slash commands, you actually have to create what each slash means. Yep. Here, you can say in, in Slack, all you want is this at bot. And then when you at mention that bot, all the words that you use after that right. can be used to tell Sherwell what you oh, want it to do. Cool. And it's all processed by a, a one step. And so, yep. Yep. you know, building in that, uh, you know, I want to create a ticket, you're right. telling the one step to look for the words create a ticket, and then it goes through and does all the rest yeah, for cool. you. So, cool. yeah. so I know we've even done uh, pilots, I know our customers have done some really cool stuff uh, with one steps where they can take any text, right? And they have uh, you know access to some NLP engine, so they can even do super cool, interesting things with that with our one-step automations. Again, um, pretty much without writing code, they can do a ton of cool stuff. So sure. that's awesome. So um, yeah, so let's talk. So we talked about Slack, okay? But some of you, right? Maybe many of you are probably wondering, like, well, wait a minute, we don't use Slack, <laughs> right? We use Teams, right? So I would say, from talking to industry experts, doing some research, right? Most enterprises in the world, and I'd say most, it's probably more than 80%, probably either have Slack or Teams as sort of a standard in the, in, in, in the organization. So uh, Teams is coming, is this correct? Yeah, so Teams um, Teams is actually coming in the short-term roadmap, we're working on it. Um, part of what made us go with Slack first was that the Teams API is still in beta, so Microsoft's still Got wrapping it. some of that stuff up. Um, and then also just the fact that we, you know, in, in our research, Slack was slightly more used than Teams uh, yep. from an organizational okay. standpoint. Yep. Cool, cool. So in Slack, obviously, you know, these technologies typically aren't super, super expensive. Some organizations, we actually still have both, I think, mm -hmm. although we they're standardized on Slack. So, um, okay, so cool. So um, let's move on. I want, there's a couple other things I want to talk about. So let's talk about sentiment analysis. So let's talk about ML, kind of, an, you know, right within our platform. Um, so talk a little bit about what is sentiment analysis and, and, and how could customers gain value from that? Sure. So um, when we originally, actually, our customers shed a lot of light on how sentiment analysis could be used at uh, Clear this year. When we were originally approaching it, the thought was um, being able to take a look at incoming text from the customer or the description field on an incident and understanding um, if the customer has you know, an overwhelmingly negative experience, if they're using more negative language in that, um, and just understand their overall sentiment. Yeah. Um, yeah. So our initial goal was um, to create a way to, to harness that and, and view that on the incident. Um, in going through that and, and talking with customers, we found that there are lots of other ways that they had mentioned possibly using it. Um, one of the greatest examples I, I kind of got a chuckle out of a clear was a customer wanted to prompt for the body of an email message for her, from her technician. 
that if the technician entered language that they were going to send to the customer that was overwhelmingly negative, they wanted to be like, nice try, be a little bit more positive yeah. in your email. Yeah. And I was like, that's actually a great, a great way to use that as well. So what we ended up doing was um, creating an expression-based uh, way to, to um, to analyze sentiment. So now, those of you who you share well, um, there's a, an expression manager. So it's just a type of expression, you know, whether it's a math calculation or text, or in this case, it's sentiment. And so what you do is you point that at a text field or you know a, a series of text fields, and it will output a positive or negative score. Um, and so the the interesting thing will be um, because as many of our customers know, uh, when people are coming to you with complaints overwhelmingly they're going to be negative. Um, the cool thing is that you'll get to define what sentiment means. So just because the average ticket that comes in is a negative one doesn't mean that that's a, an overwhelmingly negative sentiment as an organization. It may mean that's your average. And so that may be a positive sentiment, but you get down to like the negative eights, negative nines, those are the people who are having really bad experiences. So yeah. because this outputs as a number for you, you can actually interpret it, what it means organizationally to you. The technology behind it is really cool. It's um, it's actually a library that was trained off of Wikipedia and some other internet sources. So it understands things like dub, double negatives and um, to some extent sarcasm. Um, in the first pass of this, our goal was to really get it out there so that people could start using it. Um, our future goal is to even get you the, the ability to inject your own things. So if you have like a colloquial phrase that you use at your organization, being able to define its sentiment Yep. Um, yeah. So that'll be you know our yeah. phase two of this, but it's really exciting. I like, mean, people like, can do whatever they want. Like sentiment analysis, like wicked spot. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wicked is so you're from Boston. Wicked, wicked may not be a yeah, bad yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. All right, cool. Uh, of course, we can go to the little pack the cop. Anyway, we'll, we'll, we won't go there. Um, so, all right. So I actually, so, so what's interesting there is, um, I got a bunch of interesting other ideas because this is all, you know, again, it's expression. Um, manager used, right? We can also use it in one step theoretically, right? Yeah. So what that means then is we can do some cool stuff. So for instance, um, if we had the ability to provide a transcript, right? And we don't, we don't provide that out of the box, but there's technology out there. It's pretty simple, right? You have voice coming in, you have an, you have an agent, right? And so a lot of our customers even already have that going, sure. whether it's transcribing really live, um, you could score that text, right? Absolutely. Um, One of the other things we thought about that that um, we're working with a beta customer on was uh, the concept of tracking sentiment on inbound messages. So the longer a ticket exists, does my customer's sentiment yeah, decrease? Yeah, right. So you could see like, oh, over the span of five days, the customer interactions get more negative because their problem hasn't been solved. Yeah. Or understand. I mean, there's limitless possibilities yeah. that you could do yeah. with this. That's so pretty cool. Pretty yeah. cool. So yeah, at first blush, I'm like, oh, sentiment analysis, how, how cool is that? But actually, it, it, it is super cool. Again, I think, I think what you actually start seeing is this pattern where you know, these things put together, these features put together, end up creating these really compelling, interesting um, you know, combinations, right? Again, with our automation engine that provide that you know, even better experience, even more efficient for IT, et cetera. Um, so yeah, it's super cool. Um, last thing I think let's just talk about briefly is is mobile. So, you know, we've had adaptive responsive design for a while, um, but we can continue to improve it, improve it, improve it. Um, you know, some of you out there have maybe even tried it um, as an existing customer. I think the first versions, a couple of people tried it, and got frustrated with a couple of the things. Um, we've improved it since, um, and then. I heard that from a technician perspective, there were still some pesky things, you know, kind of hanging out there that we've we've now kind of resolved. And then probably some of you are thinking like, oh, well, that 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 you know related item navigation, well, that's going to suck on a mobile device because that thing's you know it, it, we got to need more screen real estate, et cetera, et cetera. So talk a little bit about how you know what that you know adaptive responsive. Um, experience could be for customers or will be with 10 L. Yeah, so um, that's actually the exact opposite of what we did with um, with related item nav, which I think is the coolest thing. So um, obviously the adaptive forms, your adapt all the adaptive layouts that you could build prior to 10 L are still there. And again, we're always improving that. So yeah. the experience of the adaptive form itself is as good as you know you build the form now. Um, yeah. The related item nav is actually fully responsive. So um, if you're viewing that on a mobile device, it's going to be responsive to to how you know what device you're you're working on, yeah. um, which is which is actually great. So that experience is 
putting things that you would have used in that related item nav tab, your attachments, the you know email, the solution search, all that stuff, um, and making it even more usable on a mobile device. So okay. um, you know we're we're kind of at this point in that hybrid where you're part adaptive and part responsive, um, but the overwhelming mobile experience was something we really focused on heavily for Tendo. So. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the related item now pairs in and really starts to make that experience even more manageable for those customers on, on mobile devices. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So is there anything else in Tenno, <laughs> having been one of the, you know, primary technical drivers uh, that we didn't talk about that you would like to mention that you think is important for our, our uh, customers or prospects out there? Well, Tenno, I mean, Tenno and all is such a, fe a rich uh, feature release that it's, um, it's all exciting. Um, I did touch on the, the webhooks with Slack app. I'm an API guy, anybody who knows me out there. Uh, webhooks has been something I've been fighting for since I was a customer, you know, six years ago. So um, I think that the possibilities of things that you can do with webhooks is so cool. Um, and it's really hard to explain that in, you know, in conversation, but I think for those of you that are um, comfortable with APIs or trying to integrate with other tools, the great part about webhooks is you know, the previous process to integrate oftentimes required somebody who was working on the other tool to have a lot of knowledge about how to pass that information to ShareWell. Yeah. The great part about the webhooks now is you can define a simple endpoint, um, you define the new endpoint, and it's just waiting for a, a block of JSON to be passed as, you know, into that webhook, and then you can use a one step to do anything you want with it. So. The things that we're opening up with webhooks and the integrations that we're going to be able to build now, both two-way integrations and one-way integrations, are going to be um, huge and, and really exciting. So I know those folks out there that are big integrators are looking to tie Sharewell into all the rest of their tools. This is going to be a great place yeah. to start. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, all right. So I think we're going to wrap, kind of wrap things. I do actually. I actually. Um, so I did have a question, but I'm going to come back to that. So. Um, just a quick plug again for those out there, um, right? We're doing a demo, so you can register. There should be a link in the comments on this live stream. Um, number one, so at 11:30, so we're getting a, a little time to maybe you know grab some coffee in between or whatever, and then come back, uh, you know, ready. Maybe you know, maybe I don't know what time zone you're in, but maybe grab some something to eat, a snack to tide you over, because um, that demo is gonna go. 30 minutes, but it's gonna be super cool. We're gonna show a bunch of the functionality we just talked about. Um, and I, you know, we'll even have a little bit of time for, for Q&A. So let's talk about a couple other things in terms of, in terms of like what's actually happening here. And just hang, hang out here for a minute because I may have a couple more questions for you. Um, so first of all, um, today is our launch, right? So there's a press release on our website. Um, in that press release, there's some links to some cool stuff. But there's also one of those things is this sharewell.com slash CSM10 right, landing page. So if you want more information on this release, right, that's a great place to go. In addition, okay, uh, this is going GA this month. right? So this is, this is uh, you're, what you're going to see demoed you know, effectively is, is that GA version, but it's, it's going to be generally available this month. Um, again, I talked about this briefly, but it will be available for existing CSM customers, as well as any customers that are purchasing our, our CSM enterprise, right? Both of both those customers will have access to 10.0 uh, and this cool functionality. Um, so definitely check that out. Um, and the, the page it will explain as well some of the things I talked about with upgrades. So there's upgrade technical upgrades. So you're on 9.6 or 9.5, and you know you can upgrade to 10.0, right? But then there's also that hey, I've got a CSM license. And I want to upgrade to that CSM enterprise, or I want to add on, right, shareable virtual agent. And again, that landing page right here is going to, is going to explain a lot of that. In addition, next week, um, we're going to launch a bunch of other cool new stuff. So for instance, there's going to be what's new webinar. So we'll go, we'll have a whole webinar kind of recounting some of this um, that we showed on the whiteboard, but it'll be, you know, a more traditional webinar format. Um, we'll have some other presenters, so I'm actually not presenting, so you know, that's good for you guys to get to hear somebody else <laughs> talk. Um, but, and, and then there'll be a demos on that as well, right? That's, you know, again, probably mostly focused on existing customers, but it definitely would be valuable for anybody to see what's new uh, in Tenno. In that webinar, um, we will be talking about, it's usually like a what's new, what's next webinar, so we will give you a quick kind of a preview if you will, or at least talk to, kind of a, a little bit of a roadmap. 
um, which is actually what I wanted to come back to Ari. So I don't, we're not going to talk about this in detail at all, but I heard in a very near-term uh, release, right? We did this sort of hackathon with AWS, and there's some cool uh, building block something. I don't know if what it's actually called, right? I should know in prep market. <laughs> we'll, we'll have a good name for it, but <laughs> can you talk a little bit about, about that um, briefly and how that is going to be valuable? We don't think we can talk about time frame. Sure, yeah. Uh, yeah, so um, we kind of came up with a new concept. Of, um, it's more around delivery of these items to the customers, yeah. um, which are action blocks, uh, which will be in a, a future release short term. Um, but the concept there is the, that we're going to uh, put these blocks together to make it uh, really easy for you to uh, reach out to the AWS API um, yeah. and uh, do a lot of cool things with, with their uh, you know their integrated service catalog with all of the assets that you can you know spin up and, and reference and all the cloud watch alarms and stuff. So um, over the next you know couple releases, there'll be uh, maps that will use some of the action blocks and some that just use existing functionality with a you know automation engine and one steps, um, and it'll be just enabling you to to do a lot of cool stuff with with AWS and again really around you know making sure that you can provision AWS items from ShareWell, yeah. get them back into the CMDB, yeah. do some reporting, all that good stuff. Yeah, super cool. Super cool. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so a couple other things just really quickly. Why should you upgrade, right? Again, I think I've, hopefully, you know, upgrading to 10 right, is, is fairly obvious. Like if you want to get the omni-channel experience, you want real-time collaboration, uh, you want a more intelligent platform that has more automation, more self-service, right? more AI, machine learning um, capabilities, right? Def definitely this is you know, where you want to head. Uh, and then a better experience for your IT you know, people as well, the agents. And then also with that, right? Again, you, you heard um, Ari talk about that related item navigation, which provides a whole lot of cool capability. It's, it's responsive, right, to that mobile device. So it actually sort of like slides in and out as necessary um, as, you, as, as you act out. I've seen some of that, and it's just pretty cool. So, um, so I think with that, um, we are going to close out um, the webinar. So again, just a couple quick reminders. Uh, not webinar, live stream, whatever, um, <laughs> whiteboard. Uh, so number one, demo, right? Live demo at 1130. Look at the live, live comments for the, the, the link. It's going to be done through on 24. Um, check out um, the landing page. Check out the press release on our website. Uh, register for the webinar next week, the What's New webinar next week. Um, and then we're going to be doing a whole series, actually, of, of, of webinars. Many of you, either you know, prospects or um, customers, will be getting emails and updates as we go that will give you more and more and more information about uh, right, CSM Enterprise, about Sherwell Virtual Agent, uh, et cetera, um, in coming weeks. So uh, stay tuned for that as well. So with that, Thanks, Ari. Thank you. Everything. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. And thanks, everybody, for tuning in. And uh, hopefully that was useful. We'll see you on the demo.